Hey, I'm Madison Mary and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, please don't hesitate to click that subscribe button down below. And without further ado, let's get into my vlog. This vlog is a book talk vlog and that means that it's coming from the TikTok account that I have. I have a lot of videos on there and I've always had a lot of people commenting on them being like, oh, read this, read that, or just like commenting random books on the videos that I post. It got to the point where I was like, well, why don't I read some of the books that people are telling me to read. Like these are people actively being like, read this book. Those three books from the three different comments are going to be Legend Born by Tracy Dion. Um, it's like an Arthurian retelling in modern day. Then another comment was telling me to read The Bear and the Nightingale. Well, the Winter Night Trilogy in general. And this person had commented actually in a couple different videos, this book, and I was like, <laughs> that's actually the main reason why I decided to do this video is because of this comment and because it is a five-star prediction for me and I have been putting it off for like the last two years reading this book. And I was just like, you know what? This is the last sign that I needed to just be like, okay, let's read this book. And then the last book that cropped up was A King So Cold by Ella Fields. Now this is a book on Kindle Unlimited. Um, it's a dark fantasy romance and I have seen it pop up like on my Amazon recommended a couple of times, but I've never like actively looked into it. It just has a really cool cover. But yeah, those are the three books that I have been recommended on my TikTok channel. If you would like me to do one of these where a viewer recommends, I actually want you to comment down below a book that you want me to read that you think I will actually like. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into the vlog. So it's pretty early in the morning, but I um, have to leave to get my vaccine in an hour and just in case I feel like completely out of shit afterwards, I figured I should probably update you on where I am in Legendborn. So I'm a little less than halfway through at the moment. I'll make this far through. Editing medicine here. So I'm um, just working on my thing and I realized I never actually told you what Legendborn is about for some weird reason. So in Legendborn, we are following Brie Matthews in the prologue, you find out that she has gotten into this accelerated college program at UNC Chapel Hill, which is her mother's alma mater. She tells her mom about it and her mom gets really upset. And then they have a fight. And the next day her mom ends up dying in a car accident. And that is the beginning. And then we follow a couple months later when it is Bree's first night at the accelerated college program in UNC. She's 16 years old, by the way. And that night in the woods at this like weird initiation, like orientation thing. She ends up seeing these two other students fighting this creature that no one else can see and no one else remembers like anything really going on. And she's really confused by this. And then later on, she ends up seeing another creature and she sees another group of like students battling it. And she realizes that she has like this site where she can see these creatures. And so she ends up being brought into the Legendborn who are this secret society of people following the Arthurian legends. And they are actually descendants from the legends themselves, especially the Knights of the Round Table, Arthur and Merlin. And so it's her joining the Legendborn, learning what this secret society is about. And then also kind of learning how her mum was entangled with some of these mysteries going on at UNC back in her day and a lot of other things go on from that, but that's like the basic gist of what this book is about. I just wanted to come on here and let you know because my dumb ass didn't say anything in the vlog. So I was just like, bruh, really? So here we go. Hope you enjoy. It's interesting because you really start off like instantly, like it's go, go, go from the very beginning. And there's a lot of commentary, and I knew this about this book, a lot of commentary about Brie being black at a school where there is predominantly white people around. And then when she does kind of join the legend born, she's like, well, I'm the only black person here. She also is kind of treated sometimes as like a token person of color. And she also is just like racially profiled and people assume things of her. And there's just a lot of conversations about that. Um, I <laughs> There's a romance in this. I feel like it's gonna go horribly wrong. Like I'm so terrified for this romance, but it is like, mm, I love it. It is so sweet and adorable and cute. And I'm just like a squeal when they're together. I'm not gonna spoil who it's with because like, that's part of the fun. Really digging all these characters. And there's a lot of talk about her grief as well. And I mean, I've never lost someone in the same way that Brie has. And even the author herself lost her mom at a young age. And a big part of this is how she is so traumatized and has this PTSD from that attack and that whole situation. And 
how she never really dealt with it in a great way. I think it's really, really, really beautifully written. The magic system in this is really interesting. So I'm, I don't want to like spoil anything, but I will kind of give you a basic lay down. So the Knights of the Round Table plus King Arthur, when things were going down, Merlin decided to enact a lifelong spell where their bloodlines, all of them would be eternal. And so there is many, many bloodlines for all the Knights of the Round Table plus Arthur and Merlin. And when you inherit that bloodline, you kind of have this right. And there are three different factions. There's the Southern, Western, and Eastern faction for like the Legendborn. And the Legendborn are like the really special people. They're the ones who are like direct descendants. Like they're the heirs. Like they're the ones who are like super duper like high society. And then there's like just regular people who are descended from the bloodlines. But unless you're a Merlin, you don't actually have any magic inherently. It's only if you are awakened. The Merlin character in this is really there's many Merlins, but the guy who is our King Arthur's Merlin is like, I don't know if I, I can, like, he is just such a mess. Like, he is just rude and a dick and he's just a horrible, horrible person and he has a lot of power and he hates Brie because he thinks that there's something shady going on with her, which there is because she can actually reject his magic. She has her own magic and she's like, I don't really, I don't get what's going on. I'm super invested in this story and I'm digging it. So if you have been hesitant to pick it up, please do. I'm going to hopefully read like more of it today and maybe even finish it. It just depends on how I feel after my vaccine. Hello, hello, hello. So... Got my vaccine. Um, it's been a couple hours. Doing chill. Very positive. I want to do a quick update because I read like an extra 100 pages of Legend Born and I'm just like, I'm in love. I'm in love with this book. Like, I cannot get over it. The romance in it is really sweet. There's some really funny, hilarious moments between some of the characters. It's also really emotional. There's a lot of talk about the racism aspects of it and also just the history. And then there's a bit of learning all like the different magics and like, you know, like the legend born magic and then like the root magic and just everything is amazing. I'm becoming so invested in it. We're learning a little bit more about like the Merlin dude I was telling you guys about. And I'm just like, I cannot foresee this book not being a five star. I cannot foresee this book not. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm like, does that make sense Well, my negatives? I'm gonna continue reading and that's all I wanted to say. Hello, hello, hello everyone. So I have finished A Legend Born and I gave it a five out of five stars. Are we surprised? No, like this was just, this was amazing. This was so freaking good. And like, it doesn't end off on like too much of a cliffhanger, but like it ends off on enough of a cliffhanger where I'm like, I need the next book. I'm really curious to see if there will be a love triangle because like there isn't, but I want there to be because I ship her with someone else than the guy that she is actually with throughout this entire book because I want to be with the other guy. So let me know if you've read this, if you agree with the other guy, if that's who you want to be with, because that's who I want to be with. So many great conversations in this, especially when it comes to trauma and grief and just like loss of a parent. Like there's such a large conversation in this about that. I will warn you that like, if you are sensitive to like having lost someone recently in your life, this may be hard to read, but I thought it was amazing. So I'm really excited to, you know, share this with everyone. And so I hope that you read it. But I recently was reached out to by a glasses company. They do like regular glasses, blue light glasses and sunglasses. And they're called Tyne. They sent me two pairs for free to review for you guys. So I'm really excited. I looked them up and I thought they had some really cool lenses. Plus I really love that they did blue light lenses because recently I've been editing my videos like all in one shot. And when I'm sitting all day in front of the laptop editing, I get such a huge headache so I definitely definitely needed blue light glasses so this pair is the blue light lens all right oh that's really cool so it comes with like spare of like the little nosy thingies and then it also comes with a glasses cleaner and then they all come in like a really pretty case and the case opens just like this and let's see what these look like I'm very nervous and exciting so this is what the blue light lenses are let's have a look see gosh I don't wear glasses like I have 2020 vision so these are my oh gosh you can now see all like the ring light in it but these are the blue light lenses so here is what the glasses look like up close they're very simple they're very lightweight and they're just like really pretty and aesthetic which is what I really like about their brand and then we have the sunglasses which I'm like really really excited about same kind of situation that they come with like a bunch of extra stuff oh my god these okay these are perfect these are so good okay ready 
Oh, bam. Are we ready for a day out strolling along the, oh wow, these actually really work nicely. Even with like, I can stare at my ring light right now. I probably shouldn't, but I can if I wanted to. So these are more of a tortoise shell and they have a tinted lens, which I really like the shape of them. They're more like cat eye. Okay, I'm gonna get back to everything else I have to do today and I'll catch you up once I am like 50% into King So Cold. Hey, okay, so I am 26% of the way through the book and I thought I would up to you now just because I have a lot of thoughts. We're following Queen Audra and she's like 24 years old and that's very young for, you know, a queen, a royal to be because they actually live like 700 years. Queen Audra of the Moon Kingdom is currently on the cusp of war with the Sun Kingdom and the reason for this is because the Prince of the Sun Kingdom murdered her dad and he was actually engaged to Audra at the time and she was actually in love with him like she fell for him and she's like a complete other bitch like an ice queen like yeah she's the princess of the moon kingdom but she's like she's a she's an ice icy bitch like she is not a good person I dig it though and so she then had a witch repress his memories and then sent him to live in exile and when this takes place she has just found out that him in exile is about to get married to like this human woman. And she's like, okay, I, this has gone on for too long. I cannot let this transpire. And so she ends up bringing him back to her palace and like is keeping him in the dungeons. And she's trying to get him to regain his memories by telling him stories of when they first met and their times together when she was 18 so that she can eventually kill him. But like, I don't think that's gonna happen. I think we're gonna learn a lot more about like what really happened and why he did kill her dad. But her dad was an awful person. Like the king, the old king was a really bad person. Like there's like a flat out rape scene, like a like bad, like she's at a ball when she's still a princess and her dad's still alive and he just flat out rapes someone. And like no one can say anything because like he's the king and if anyone says anything, he'll kill them. Like he's not a good person. She was raised by his ruthlessness. So she became ruthless as a result of that to shelter herself from his tyranny. She's very powerful. She's a very selfish person. She thinks she's above others. She doesn't like anyone saying anything against her. She is very confident in herself. And she's also very sex positive, which I really do enjoy. Um, there's a lot of sex going on in this book, but so far it's been kind of crass sex because there's no emotions behind the sex that she's having. In the present timeline when she's a queen, her lover is the Lord of the East of her kingdom. I'm enjoying it. There's a lot of different creatures and I'm enjoying like the whole elemental magic of this place. Queen Audra, she's super, super powerful in her magic. And so she can like use her wind to do different things with like barely a flick of her hand. Like it's really awesome how powerful she is. And then the guy who's like the vampire blood magic dude, who's actually the Lord of the East is that person, her current lover. He can like drain someone of blood just by looking at them like, Oh my god. I thought this was a really long update, but it's just because there's a lot going on in this book and it's very difficult to explain and to get like all my thoughts out for it. So I don't know. I hope I didn't like, I didn't just bore you. That is it. And I'll update you when I'm maybe like 70% through the book. We'll see how I feel. Who knows? Yeah. Bye. Hey, okay. So I finished A King So Cold. Um, it was interesting. <laughs> I think I'm giving it a three out of five stars. I think it's fine it's just it is a dark fantasy romance so do go into it knowing that none of the dark topics in it were like what made me lower my star rating at all I actually really enjoyed that fact of like the different dark aspects to do with I mean like there's intense torture mutilation a lot of gore and graphic violence um there is a lot of talk about rape and sexual assault in this what I didn't enjoy in this at all was the sex scenes because they read more like erotica than anything else. I didn't get anything out of the scenes myself. Um, they were just very crude, to be honest with you. I skimmed a lot of the scenes. They weren't what I wanted at all. Um, so that's fine. Like that happens from time to time. This took a completely different turn than I was expecting. When you read the synopses of this, it makes it sound like it's a romance between Queen Audra and Prince Raiden, well slash his king now because they were like, you know, married and stuff, but it's not their romance. It's not their romance whatsoever. Um, it's actually the romance between Audra and that lover guy slash vampire slash lord dude who I mentioned earlier. It's their romance, which I did not know going into it. And even when I was reading it, it wasn't until like 50% through the book that I was like, oh, okay, this is their, relationship, their romance, not 
this other one. You start off for the first 50% of the book following just Audra's POV, but then after the 50% mark, you follow Audra's POV and then you get chapters from Raiden's POV, who is the Prince King from the Sun Kingdom, and then also Zad's perspective, and Zad is the Lord Lover Vampire dude. I will say there's one massive twist that occurs, and I was just like, bruh, what? Like, dude, everyone in this world, you can't trust anyone. So it was like an average read, it was fine. I'm glad I finally read it, but I mean, unless what I've said in the things that occur in this book, I like your style, I wouldn't recommend it. If you do enjoy Fortuna Sworn by KJ Sutton, if you really loved that, but wished there was more sex in it, I would highly recommend this for you because that is what this reminded me a lot of. Um, it's only a duet, but I'm not interested to see where it keeps on going. I'd much rather just look up spoilers to see how it ends, honestly, because I'm not at all invested in the romance. And I think that's a big reason why I wasn't vibing with this was I thought it was a bit, I just didn't like it. And there is an age gap between the two of them. And it's, I understand that they're immortals, but the way that it was written, she was 14 when he first met her and like became like kind of obsessed with her. And I think that's why it's a little meh. So anyway, it's Mother's Day currently. Already did a bunch of stuff for my mum today. It's like 4 or 5 p.m. now. So I am actually going to start Zelda really. Uh, so I'm going to start the bear and the nightingale now. I'm really excited because it's raining out and it's really gross weather and it's supposed to continue raining until tomorrow. And that's like the perfect weather for that book. Okay, I'll catch you guys up later. Bye bye. Hey, hey, okay. So it's been a couple days. Um, I started my internship and it's been like a little bit hectic because of that, but I am now a little over 50% of the way through The Bear and the Nightingale and I'm enjoying it, but it is a very slow read and it's not action packed at all. It's almost like you're reading a Russian fantasy folklore book because it is set in like a fantastical historical version of Russia. So you're following the Vladimirovic family and what happened was the wife Marina, her mother was like kind of a witch in a sense to this world. And when Marina was born, she never really inherited much of her mother's magic. But when she was pregnant with her fifth child, she knew that this child was going to be like her mother. And even though she knew that she would probably die giving birth to this child, she was determined to keep it. And so she gives birth to Vasilisa. And that is who our main character is for this entire book is Vasilisa and you're watching her grow up in this first book. This book is mainly about her coming of age, but like I said, she does end up taking after her grandmother where she has some sort of magic in her. You don't really know what that is yet. I, I mean, I still don't know what it is, but she can see creatures, the mythical magical creatures of this world that a lot of people call demons because they are these creatures that actually like some of them are good, some of them are bad. Like there's this one that lives in her house in the oven and he actually like helps stoke the fires. He helps keep the house warm. And then late at night, like if you leave him offerings, he will then like mend all the clothing for everyone. He will wash the dishes, like he'll look after everything. And there's another one that lives um, in the stables and he like looks after the horses and cleans the stables. There's another one that lives in a lake. She's not really a really great one. Um, she kills anyone who comes near the lake and eats them. But then Vasilisa befriends her and then she no longer kills anyone because Vasilisa is her friend and that feeds her instead as like to stay alive. So it's like one of those things where in order for these creatures to stay alive, people have to believe in them and give them offerings. If people stop believing in them, if people stop giving them offerings, they will kind of fade out of existence, which is how like the gods have always been in like different mythologies. Vasilisa's dad ends up getting remarried to this woman named Anna. And Anna can see these creatures as well, but she is terrified of them, believes 100% that they are demon, believes that she is cursed because she can see them. And as a result is very pious and like reverent in the church. And so when she moves into, you know, this little nothing town where Vasilisa's family is to marry the dad, she ends up requesting that a new priest be brought in because she's like, we need God here. And then this new priest gets brought in and he's like a very renowned, very famous priest. And he can tell that like this town needs fixing because he can tell that there are like some sort of like ill will creatures there. They're not ill will creatures. And so he starts like 
putting fear in everyone and making them all reverent of God. And because they now all start believing in like Christianity and God, the little creatures and the old gods start disappearing. This is a very dark and depressing book. Um, their lives are very dark and depressing and everyone tries to quell the rebellion and the free spirit of Vasilisa. And I love her. She's awesome. And I love all of her interactions with the different creatures and just how she is growing as a woman throughout this. I adore her. So yeah, I'm really interested to see her kissing going. I'm enjoying it and I will keep you updated. But it is a slow read. It is, it's a slow read. So fingers crossed for me. <laughs> hey, okay. So I finished The Burn the Nightingale and I'm giving it three out of five stars. It was an enjoyable read, but like, I honestly just don't have much to say about it, which is so strange because like I read it, it was a nice read, it was enjoyable, but like it, I wasn't like always captivated by what I was learning about and it is like fairy tale esque which I've kind of learned is not always my favourite kind of vibe when it comes to reading books. Like it's the same issue I had when I read uh, The Girl Who Drank the Moon. Like it was just very fairy tale folklore esque in the way that it was written that I was just kind of like, well, okay, like this is a book. Um, <laughs> I did enjoy like the development of the characters throughout and Vasilisa is like a really great heroine and I loved seeing her progression throughout this book and I'm very intrigued to see if the series continues on. I think that the second book is going to be way more action packed and there's just going to be a lot of different things going on and we're going to see more pieces come into play. But this definitely just feels like the beginning to a story. So this was three stars and because of that I'm actually bringing down A King So Cold to a two star read. Um, I wrote my review for it on Goodreads. And I was just like, mm, no, no, this was not it. It's not, it's not three stars. I would not, yeah, no, no. So um, if you get anything out of this video, basically uh, buy Legendborn because it is freaking phenomenal. And I highly, highly recommend it. Yeah, that's kind of it. I feel like I really haven't talked that much about this book, but like it's not a book that you can talk too much about because it's kind of just like reading a slice of life slash history book. Like I can't go too much more into detail on it. I love learning about all the little creatures, but like, that's kind of it. Plus it's a short book. It's like 315 pages. So that's it for this vlog. I hope you did enjoy it. I want to do more of these in the future. So I'm pretty sure I mentioned earlier in the video that like, I want you to comment a book that you think I would like. I'd prefer if it was a book that I owned, but if I don't, you know, it's not the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button down below. If you want to see more of me, subscribe to my channel. And until next time, thanks a bunch everyone. Bye.